Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Serial Protocols. In this short presentation, we'll introduce the basic principles behind serial protocols and how serial protocols can be analyzed and decoded using an oscilloscope. As everyone knows, digital systems are based on the concept of bits. But digital systems don't just use bits, they usually need to move or transfer them back and forth. This could be between two components, say a microcontroller and an LCD display. Or it could be between two devices, such as a USB microphone and a computer. There are many, many different ways of moving bits, but the different methods of transferring bits can be separated into two main categories, parallel and serial. Let's start by taking a look at parallel transmission. Parallel transmission moves multiple bits simultaneously between transmitter and receiver usually with a separate conductor per bit. Parallel connections work well for short distance and or point-to-point -point connections. They have simple timing and are relatively easy to analyze. Some of you may remember the parallel ports or ATA cables found in older PCs. But as popular as parallel transmission once was, it's now largely being replaced by serial transmission. As the name implies, serial transmission sends one bit at a time, with all the bits being sent over the same conductor. Serial transmission works well for longer distance applications, applications needing higher throughput, and applications where there are multiple nodes, for example, a single master node and multiple slave nodes. However, all of this comes at a cost, with serial transmission being more complex and harder to analyze. Note too that while it is true that our data bits are being sent over a single conductor or wire, most serial protocols use multiple conductors. In addition to the wire for the data bits, Many protocols also add a clock signal and or some type of control or addressing for multiple nodes. Serial protocols are used in a very wide variety of applications. The three main serial protocols used for generic applications are UART or Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, I2C which stands for Inter-IC, and SPI, the Serial Peripheral Interface which some people also call SPI. UART is a classic serial protocol. It's been used in PC serial and COM ports for decades and is easy to implement. I2C, as the name implies, was originally designed for communication between integrated circuits, but is now used for many other applications as well. SPI offers a speed improvement over I2C, but uses more wires and is generally more complex. A special category of serial protocols are those used in the automotive industry. These protocols were designed to deal with the challenging requirements of vehicles, such as providing reliable operation at a mix of both high and low speeds and in a noisy environment. CAN, the controller area network, is high speed and is often used with different types of sensors, whereas LIN, the local interconnect network, is used in lower speed applications, such as operating windows or mirrors. For critical applications like braking, FlexRay provides both higher speed as well as redundancy. Although implementation details differ between protocols, all serial protocols have four basic characteristics. Levels, timing, framing, and something we're going to refer to as protocol. Levels answers the basic question of how voltages are used to represent ones and zeros. Timing tells us how often bits are sent, or the bit time. Framing is how bits are organized into groups and the role of each bit or group of bits and protocol explains which messages are exchanged under which circumstances. All of these are important for the analysis and decode of serial data, so let's take a few minutes to examine each of these more closely. Before we can do any kind of digital decode, we need to be able to tell the ones and zeros apart. In other words, how do we determine bit values from voltage levels? The simple approach would be to say that a low voltage equals zero and a high voltage equals one. And this is, in fact, how some serial protocols work. Clearly, in this case, we would need to define the difference between low and high, and this is usually done by specifying a threshold, a voltage above which is a 1 and below which is a 0. However, protocols used in challenging environments, such as automotive, often use differential voltage, since differential signals tend to be more immune to noise. Differential means that a 0 or a 1 is defined based on the difference between two voltages, rather than the voltage with respect to ground. Defining the 0 and 1 voltage levels is not enough to determine what bits we're receiving. 
We also have to know how fast the bits are being generated. In other words, what is the bit rate or bit time? Consider these bits. Are they these values? Or are they these values? It depends on the configured bit rate. In order to decode serial data, we clearly need to make sure that our receiver or instrument is using the same bit rate as a transmitter. Serial protocols typically order or organize bits into so-called frames. The individual bits or groups of bits in the frame have defined meanings, and some knowledge of the structure is needed to decode the frames correctly. For example, to decode the UART serial protocol, we need to know that the idle state of the line is a high voltage level, and that a transition from high to low is a start bit that indicates the start of our frame. We then need to know how many data bits to read, as well as the fact that there's a high voltage level stop bit that ends the frame, followed by a return to the idle state. By knowing the frame structure, we can extract the user data, here the ASCII letter capital S, from the serial bit stream, as well as derive other information about the transmission. The last aspect we'll discuss is something we're going to call protocol. A generic definition of protocol is a set of rules for encoding and exchanging information. We've already discussed the rules for encoding information in the form of levels, timing, and framing. There can also be rules for how and when we send data, and the types and meanings of the messages that are exchanged between endpoints. Let's look at a few examples. A simple protocol would be to send data as soon as it's available, regardless of whether the receiver is ready for the data or not. A more sophisticated protocol would be to use some mechanism to ask for permission before sending data. For example, one way of doing this is for the sender to send a ready to send signal to the receiver, and only after receiving a clear to send reply does the transmitter send the data. An even more sophisticated protocol would involve the sender waiting for an explicit acknowledgement that data was correctly received before sending more data, or resending missing data or error data when receiving a negative acknowledgement. So how do we decode serial protocols? In the old days, serial protocols were typically decoded using special dedicated protocol testers. But today, the most common method, by far, is using a modern digital storage oscilloscope with one or more channels. After choosing the serial protocol of interest, we need to configure the levels, timing, and framing to match the serial signal that we're analyzing. Using this information, the oscilloscope produces results in the form of raw voltage levels, detected bits, and frames whose contents can be displayed in binary, hex, ASCII, etc. Serial decode on oscilloscopes also often includes additional functionality, such as triggering on specific symbols within the frame, assigning humanly readable labels to user-defined patterns, exporting data, etc. So let's summarize what we've learned. Serial protocols are used to move bits sequentially, or one at a time, between components or between separate devices. Serial communications are used in almost everything digital and can be divided into two main categories. Generic standards like UART, I2C, and SPI, and more application-specific protocols like CAN, LIN, and FlexRay. All serial protocols have certain characteristics, such as how voltages are mapped into bits, the timing or bit rate, how bits are organized into message units or frames, as well as the types of frames exchanged and the rules for when each type of frame is sent. And although serial protocols have been around for a long time, modern digital oscilloscopes are now the tool of choice for analyzing and decoding serial data. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Serial Protocols. Thanks for watching.